Hi, welcome back to Nana's Cookery. Today we're going to make a cream cheese pie. I haven't made a whole lot of uh, cheesecakes lately. They seem so rich and heavy. They look wonderful, but then I think after a heavy meal, do I really want to have a big piece of cheesecake or serve a big piece of cheesecake? I used to make a cream cheese pie and we loved it. And it was very similar. I used to call it my Sara Lee because it was very similar to a frozen pie that Sara Lee sold, a pie crust and a graham cracker crust with sour cream. And it was really good. And then somehow I misplaced the recipe and didn't make it for years. Well, I was reminded last month, my daughter had a birthday. They were coming for dinner. And I said, what would you like for dessert? Something special that I make you'd like? And she said, how about that cream cheese pie you used to make? That, I would really like that. Well, actually, I had a source for it because a very good friend of mine had saved my recipe and she had put it in a cookbook, a family cookbook. This is from a friend of mine called Mona, who's a wonderful cook and a wonderful organizer, has edited a wonderful church cookbook and did this family cookbook. And in this, this is the first time my name actually appears in print as it says, Gloria Donahue's cream cheese pie. And it was found in her nana's, her mother-in-law's cooking uh, recipes. And also there's a note that Mona's daughter Sharon enjoys making it. So I was glad I had another source of the recipe. I was glad I'd shared it initially. So the first thing we're going to do is make the crust. Now I've already broken one pack of the graham cracker crumbs into the processor. And we'll see if one pack will give us that cup. So I'm just going to First, I gotta make sure the darn thing is hooked on. Now I'm gonna pulse it. When you put anything in the processor that you wanna break down with your knife, don't put like huge crackers in. Break it into pieces. Help the processor get started. We like this pie so much when we made it for my daughter's birthday that I made it the next week for company. And I'm making it again today because my husband said, he has a wine tasting group that meets tonight. And he said, you know what I'd like for dessert? That cream cheese pie. And I also made it for my friend Mona and she went home and made it two more times. So I think you'll enjoy it if you make it. It gives you that wonderful cheesecake feel, but it's not as heavy. And it doesn't serve as many people. So it's perfect for a family. I mean, a cheesecake usually serves 12 to 16, and that's a lot if you're doing it for, for your family. This gives you nice eight pieces in a nine inch pie plate. Okay, we're, we did get a cup. We got a little more than a cup out of that pack. The other thing I wanted to say quickly, I've got a couple little things I've got to flatten here. I wanted to mention something about pie plates. Most recipes call for an eight or a nine inch. But for instance, if your family is really small, you would just like to make a little pie and not have a lot of leftovers. I have safely made one half of a nine inch pie a zillion times from all my recipes in a seven inch pie plate. And so we've got our cup of uh, graham cracker crumbs. We've got uh, our two tablespoons of granulated sugar measured out. We've got our one quarter cup of melted butter. I melt butter all the time in the microwave, but first of all, I cut it into smaller pieces. Make sure that the cup will hold what you're doing. I wouldn't put a whole stick in a cup this size and do it at a very low heat. I'll maybe do it a minute at three, look at it, do it again. Otherwise, you're gonna have a very buttery microwave and very little in your cup. So I'm going to mix the crumbs and the sugar first. Uh, and I don't want to forget, I wanted that little tad of cinnamon. And not much, but I just find I really like that little bit of cinnamon in a graham cracker crust. Now we're going to pour in the butter. We're just going to start with a fork. And you just want to incorporate everything. You just want to make sure... Just want to make sure that everything is buttery and not dry graham crackers. You just go all around. It's a very simple crust. I know you can buy bake, uh, graham cracker crusts in the grocery store. I've never bought one. I've just always made my own because it only takes three minutes. 
There we go. I'm just going to pour it in there. And now I'm just going to press it around because I want it to come up the sides. And then I want it to be a nice, have a nice bottom. So you can see I'm just using my fingers again. Wash my hands. If you're going to be using food, you want to make sure you always start with clean hands. So I'm just going to bring that up. So I now have my, my sides. I'm just going to press down the bottom. You don't want to see any holes because you, you don't want that filling leaking through that crust. So, and, and you'll see that. You'll see if, they're, if it's not covering completely. And now I'm going to bring it maybe a little bit up the sides more. Now the filling is done pretty quickly too. When you're going to beat cream cheese or any, if you're going to beat butter, if you're going to beat anything where it says beat it until creamy and it's something that's normally kept in the refrigerator, take it out beforehand and make sure that it's room temperature because otherwise it just won't be correctly. Then the other thing, just like putting things in the processor, why put in great big chunks of cream cheese if you can divide it into smaller parts? Help the beater do its work. Again, I'm using this beater that I got last year that I like that sort of goes along the uh, edges of the bowl. Anything that helps, it's a good tool that's made well as you learn to do different things you'll find are worth it. Okay, so we're gonna do be cream cheese and sugar until light. So I'm going to take that cream cheese, I'm going to add the sugar. I'm going to lock my mixer. all starting to come together. I went up a little too high, I think, at the very beginning. When you've got anything dry in there, sugar, flour, whatever, don't immediately go to a higher thing because some of it's definitely going to come out. Okay, we've creamed that. It's light. As I said, because of that beater, I really don't have to do a lot of, uh, of scraping around. But I am going to scrape off the beater. I am going to go around the side once. And as you can see, that is really nicely combined because that, that cream cheese was at room temperature. And that certainly makes a difference. Now we're going to add eggs one at a time. And as I've said before, I never put eggs directly into anything. If I were on a cooking show and could afford to fail, maybe I could do that. But I have gotten little pieces of shell in an egg, so to me it's worth the extra three seconds it takes to break it into something first, make sure that it's fine, and then add it. And just do it one at a time. And one sharp crack along the edge of the bowl should be fine to, to get an egg broken. We're doing one egg at a time. We're going to we're going to add the vanilla. Just one teaspoon of vanilla. And again, I'm a purist. I like the real vanilla. Um, I like to bake with good tools, good ingredients, good cooking equipment. For me, it's worth it. There's a teaspoon of vanilla. Now, I grated the lemon rind, and I have two teaspoons. And what I find is that grating it, this is perfect for taking the peel off a lemon or an orange, but then they're long. And you really want them smaller than that in your cake or your pie or whatever because you want to distribute it better. So I just use a pair of scissors and snip, snip, snip and make it into smaller pieces. And I'm just going to put that in there. Now that didn't take more than probably three minutes or so. We're going to pour this into the pie shell and we're going to bake it for 35 minutes. Now you'll see it's quite runny. This is what it looks like and it's really just cream cheese, sugar, eggs, vanilla, and peel. 
and we're going to pour that into our nine inch plate. I'm actually going to move closer to the oven now because it's really some, it's really easier to move something that's filled if you're closer to the oven than traveling a distance. So I'm just going to put the pie plate down, then I'm going to fill it, and then I'll put into my preheated oven. Always make sure your oven is preheated to what it's called for. This was 350. Okay, we're going to put it in the oven now. Just move it carefully because, again, it's a runny filling. We're going to put it right in at 350 and we're going to cook it for 35 minutes. I'll see you in a while. We've taken the pie out of the oven after 35 minutes and now I'm going to quickly put that topping together. I have a handy measuring cup that's a cup and a half so that's nice. Just one measure gets it all. And that's one and a half cups of sour cream. Did you know that the 16 ounce sour cream that you think may have two cups in it actually does not. The 16 uh, is 16 ounces, not fluid ounces. So it's actually 30 tablespoons instead of 32. So it's a little bit shy of two cups if you're actually using a two cup. I put a, a teaspoon of vanilla in this. Now you think, well, how can it fit on that pie? Because that pie now has raised somewhat. And what you'll find, we'll put the topping on it and it'll actually have the pie go down a little bit. We're going to put this on and put this back in for another 10 minutes. I think I'll take it back over by the stove because I think that's a safer way to add anything and put it in. You know, this whole video thing is a learning process for me, so bear with me. We're just going to spoon this over the cheesecake and as you can see, as I do it, the cheesecake, will, the cheese pie will drop a little bit. That's fine. We're just putting it on there. Take it over to the edge, almost to the edge, because it'll travel a little bit. And you don't want it to go over outside the pan. And see, you think that whole thing would not fit on there, but it's going to. We're going to put that back in the oven for another 10 minutes and when we take it out we're going to let it cool to room temperature before we put it in the refrigerator so we're just we'll just put it on a rack and cool it down for a while i think most cheesecakes taste better actually when they're not all that cold this is okay right out of the refrigerator because there's not that much of it. But I think most cheesecakes benefit from taking them out maybe an hour ahead of time. Makes them not quite so dense. So now we'll wait 10 minutes till our pie is done. <laughs>